Good morning and welcome to the 29th annual exhibit of hydrogen and fuel cell technologies at the Hanover Fair 2023. We started in the 1990s. It's crazy. We've been here for quite some time. We all know the hydrogen molecule and we love it too, but it has its issues, namely uh, when it comes to transporting it, you have to compress it. And some people have good solutions to this key issue for mobile applications, also for transportation. Uh, up on stage next, we'll be talking to Alejandro Blanco, who's commercial director of Hyperbaric H2 Compression, and he'll be describing plug-and-play hydrogen compression solutions up to 1,000 bar. Welcome with me, Alejandro Blanco. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, so yeah, here uh, today we're going to explain you a little bit about what we do in hydrogen. Um, it's a nice picture of our facilities. Of course, you will be more than welcome to visit us in, in Spain or uh, later in our booth. Um, so we're going to present you our high pressure hydrogen compression technology. But uh, first of all, we're going to introduce you a little bit our company. Um, Hyperbaric was born in 1999, so more than 20 years ago as an R&D project to uh, design and manufacture a kind of equipment that process food at very high pressures. So uh, uh, the kind of equipment that we have been doing for the last 20 years has been used for pasteurized food with an alternative of heat treatment using, like I said, water at very high pressure, 6,000 bar. So for that specific application, um, we have more than 70% of the market, sir, and we have machines pretty much all around the world, as you can see over there in more than 50 countries. And we have been delivering uh, roughly 1,000 or more than 1,000 water compressors that have been running in food industries all around the world 24-7 uh, hours, uh, trying to uh, provide products uh, that most probably you are eating uh, daily, like uh, juices, guacamole, dips, uh, products like that. Um, so, like I said, we have been in the business for more than 24 years dealing with high pressure and other figures of the company that you can see over there is that we have a regular turnover of uh, probably 60 million euros uh, in which this year 10% of this turnover will be coming from, from hydrogen, for our business life of hydrogen. We have a human team of more than 140 employees. Uh, most of them, I would say 90% uh, of this um, this team is located now in our headquarters in, in Spain, in Burgos. We are located two hours north of Madrid. Um, in this headquarters is in which we have the, um, the R&D center and also our manufacturing plant. But uh, you can see over there in the map that we have people pretty much all around the world to try to be as close as possible to our customers. So we have uh, offices uh, in North America, in Miami, Mexico, Singapore, and Australia. Uh, something very important is that uh, most of our team have a higher education and uh, around 40 uh, of this team uh, is working on, on R&D projects. Okay? This is a very important pillar of hyperbaric. Um, we invest a lot of resources, uh, not only money as you can see over there on the bottom, also a lot of people are working on improving our existing technology and also uh, to try to generate new business opportunities. Uh, but always with the lay motif of uh, fluid at a very high pressure. Okay, so that's why we are nowadays uh, here um, in this show. Um, so like I said before, we have been in the high pressure processing business for more than 20 years, mainly with this technology with HPP, uh, water at a very high pressure, but we have all the business light in the company. We have uh, a technology that works by compressing uh, gas, argon in this case at 2,000 bar of pressure and 2,000 Celsius. Uh, basically, to, it's a post-processing technology for uh, metallic parts coming from 3D printing technologies uh, to densify and improve the mechanical properties. Okay? So this is a business life of, uh, another business life of our company that we developed a few years ago. And today, we're going to talk, uh, obviously, about our hydrogen compression solution. So in the, within the value chain of the, of the hydrogen, uh, this is something, of course, that you, you you could be really familiar of. Uh, so we have solutions either for projects that are generating hydrogen, so we need to compress the gas right after an electrolyzer to be stored or transported. But we also have solutions for uh, mobility, for refueling stations, okay? So within the value chain of the hydrogen, we have solutions for both. 
and I'm going to explain you uh, as better as I can our, our solution for hydrogen compression systems that you can see a picture of one of our existing units. Uh, so the, the approach for our hydrogen compression technology is that we provide a complete plug and play solution. Okay, so it's a complete package that you can easily integrate along with the rest of the, of course, elements that we have seen previously in the value chain. Um, and basically, we have uh, two models that we will see later, depending on the delivery pressure that we need. Okay, we have uh, compression up to 500 bar delivery pressure, or as uh, we said at the beginning, up to 1,000 bar delivery pressure. Of course, we guarantee that there is no contamination of the, of the hydrogen, because it's, uh, of course, uh, um, a critical aspect when we are talking about uh, uh, hydrogen. Uh, even though we use hydraulic to move the compressor back and forth, our piston compressor back and forth, we completely guarantee that there is no contamination uh, during the process, and we, we can detect if there is any contamination. Um, there is a very important feature of our technology. So we, um, we have used part of the knowledge uh, of, of designing and manufacturing compressor for, for these last 20 years. And uh, part of this knowledge um, uh, is that we, um, we have a very clever design for the, for the cooling of the hydrogen during the compression process. This is a very uh, spe a special gas because it gets hot not only when we are expanding the gas, also when it is compressed. So uh, we have a design in which we are able to extract the heat in a very efficient manner during the compression process. And we are almost achieving isothermal uh, compression, which is a more efficient one. And that helps us to need less energy um, during the process. And um, these white jackets in which the gas is compressed um, are cooled down. Um, and we have two jackets in which we pump cold water very close to the gas. So we are able to extract the heat in a very quick and efficient manner. Like I said, almost achieving isothermal compression. We have a modular and scalable design. We can, in a 20 feet container, we can put one, two compressors working in parallel, um, as you saw in the previous picture. Um, like I said, uh, really easy solution uh, to be installed. So we just need to connect the different utilities, the gas connections, and so on. Uh, and the, un the unit will, will, do, will do the rest, OK? We, we have a complete, uh, we'll see later, a safe and reliable design, so we provide a a venting system, all the instrumentation that is required to handle this gas in a proper manner. And two more features that I would like to, to point out is that uh, we provide this complete package solution with a very low noise level um, of 69 decibels, and we can even improve that, OK? And when we were designing this, this solution for hydrogen and for this uh, specifically for um, compressing uh, green hydrogen, is that we can completely adjust the uh, the flow rate and make as many start and stop as we want in the in the unit. Okay. So we will see now the two models that we that we provide. Like I said, depending on the delivery pressure that we have. So our KS50 compression model can deliver up to 500 bar, and we will have different uh, cases. Okay. Depending on the flow rate that we need, we can put one, two compressors in the same container, or we have a, a let's say an improved version we call Pro version that can provide more flow rate by using a bigger motor, a bigger pump, and a bigger piston uh, of, the, of the gas. OK, so these figures are from a 30 bar inlet pressure. And you can see the energy consumption is, is very low. Uh, the other model that can build the pressure up to 1,000 bar, 950 uh, normally. Um, we have the same case. We can put one or two compressors in, the 20, in a 20 feet container. But we can also have a very interesting configuration, because normally this compressor is, uh, is uh, using refueling station, uh, so coming from a variable inlet pressure or tube trailer or something like that. But we have very interesting configuration by having one compressor in series with the, with the KS95 uh, from 30 bar to provide uh, a very high flow rate, uh, let's say, with these two compressors running in series. Um, I'm going to talk in the two last slides about after sales. I said that one of the pillars of the company um, was our commitment through R&D. Uh, but after sales is, is another pillar of our company. Um, our customers require our units to be run 24-7. Uh, so that's why we provide remote 24-7 free of charge uh, service support okay, that uh, we provide with all of our units. Of course, we do uh, the installation of our units, and we provide training 
for when our customers need to do uh, any task in the, in the unit. And we also provide online diagnosis. This is very important, this predictive maintenance that we can do in our units by this remote support. Uh, as you can see a map with our units that we have in Asia, for instance, it's very important to try to anticipate to any problems that we have in, the, in our units. And lastly, uh, uh, on top of all this, we provide uh, more, um, more information about our units to do maintenance, to go over whatever um, uh, issue that we can have in the unit by this web part, uh, web after sales web, por web portal where we have this uh, repository of different videos, instruction, etc. cetera. Uh, the very last slide will be about the projects we have been doing so far for, for Adrian. and I told you how many, many customers all around the world, but talking about uh, customers and projects we have done for hydrogen compressors. Last year, we complete our fourth installation for an hydrogen compressor group. And this year, we plan to deliver between 12 and 14 uh, more units, uh, mainly for projects in Europe. Um, so the market is growing, and we, ha we, we want to be there to, to serve uh, with, our, with our technology to the market. Uh, I think I'm good in time, uh, so I want to thank you again for your time, uh, for the kind introduction, and of course invite you to our uh, booth for whatever question you have am I, about our technology, compression technology. Thank you. You finished on time, not only yeah, there's, yeah, I, I uh, there's time for a question or two. Does oh. anyone have a question from the audience? Did I see a hand go up? I always have questions. So yeah. one question I always ask is, um, when we talk about compression, we also talk about energy loss. But there are applications that require this. Some units that are mobile are happy with 300 bar. We have logistics, forklift trucks, and things like that that operate indoors. Um, uh, but some people probably require this longer uh, um, operating capacity. That is, you drive further with a 1,000 bar. Could you give me an idea of uh, what the commercial interest is in higher pressures? So we believe the market is getting there. It's getting to applications in which uh, the gas will be stored at a higher pressure mm -hmm. because of that, because we want uh, uh, higher autonomy Mm -hmm. uh, for that, we require higher pressure. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for instance, for the, uh, there is one really good ex example, I think, that in, in uh, heavy-duty mobility for trucks, the, uh, more and more companies now are switching into trucks powered with hydrogen at 700 bar instead of 350, which was the standard, uh, let's say, during the last year. Mm -hmm. So I think we are getting there. Uh, mm -hmm. So, and the, uh, the final question, of course, I know the answer to this question, but I think it's important to point this out. Some people think, just a minute, driving around with a tank at 700 bar of a combustible fuel, that, that, isn't that dangerous? Could you briefly, because we've done this before for years, compare that with the dangers of driving around with a tank of gas in your car? How dangerous is a 700 or 1,000 bar tank? Well, uh, maybe that question would be for, uh, for the automotive industry, for the ones that are doing cars. But uh, yeah, it's something similar. I mean, the, the technology needs to be enough safe and mature uh, mm -hmm. to go uh, to demonstrate that uh, that technology is safe. And we have many examples of uh, um, public transportation companies that are uh, already using Adrian as an as a energy source to move uh, buses, trucks, uh, and so on. And uh, the, the market is, is there supporting the technology. And we already have, uh, like I said, a lot of examples of using the technology in a safe manner. So mm -hmm. and, and we need to still working on that on a, safe, uh, uh, on a safe way and to guarantee that the customer and the, the people, the society is, is uh, confident enough on this technology. OK. Thank you, Alexander. Yeah, uh, my pleasure. Uh, pleasure talking to you. We'll be back in one minute with a further conversation. I just wanted to add, so we, we yeah, thank you. <laughs> Good luck.